Hello everyone. Mm, continuing with the topic of the inventive step that we have discussed in the previous slide. So here we are continuing with the next step that we have discussed to in order to know better about the inventive step. So here if you are considering prerequisites, um, we have already discussed this. Uh, if there is some doubt, we can discuss it. But uh, for the time being, I'm skipping these slides. As we all know, we need the importance, the implementation issues in the law. We have discussed it several times. Moving forward with the objectives, uh, let me tell you one major important topic uh, objective of this particular slides. Of this particular topic is made to is to make available about the knowledge or is to make you aware about the knowledge of the patent law and specifically the inventive step so that you will understand the concept well. moving forward with uh -huh. since we have discussed everything before so the fourth step in this windsurfing approach is where the assessment is obvious is uh, obviousness is made so in fact when you're talking about the fourth step in the critical question the first three steps merely laid in the ground for failure. i told you four steps in the first slide in the previous slide uh, let me revise you all those steps here the first step is talking about getting your things patentable the second thing is talking about the second step is talking about to know <laughs> what prior arts are available in your field third is comparing those arts with each other fourth one and uh, the important one here is that you are basically trying to compare your art with that previously uh, published art why because you need to know what all things are new in your slides so in order to know that uh, let me tell you the fourth step here in this approach of windsurfing approach that we discussed the four four approaches the fourth step is little critical why because the first three steps are basically trying to give you the groundwork or merely laying the groundwork that is final for the final question but the fourth step is making you understand what all things are considered without the benefit of the information available after the prior date and then when you are talking about the fourth step uh, one must guard against the ex post facto analysis because this would be unfair to those inventors who have already invented the things beforehand now moving forward in the fourth step the inventions must be compared against the whole of the state of the art comprising all the relevant pieces of the prior art moving forward quotes here sometimes imagine a hypothetical skilled addressee standing in the workshop surrounded by all the relevant papers publications and other prior art references but only those who have been obvious to use in the first place the question then becomes important here so now uh, moving forward with this uh, we will here try to understand the question that becomes important that would such a person that is that uh, would such a person who is confronting the problem solved by the inventions and aware of all those these references have found it obvious to make the claimed combination now thus unlike in the inquiry for the novelty it is permissible to construct a mosaic out of the various pieces of art in the inquiry for the obviousness so in order to know that there is however an exception created to this particular scenario for the fourth step that we have just discussed in the windsurfing approach where the assessment is obvious obviousness is made so here uh, mosaicing is not at all permitted in the previous obviousness inquiry if it would be not obvious to the skilled addressee to mosaic the different pieces of the prior art i hope this is clear now so uh, now we are talking about the obviousness of the thing so to know that obviousness focuses on the difference between the claim and the prior art so here i'm again and again telling you you would be comparing your product with the 
previously available products so here when you try to understand the obviousness of a particular thing you will try to understand how this claim and the prior art would be there for each other and ask whether these differences are really inventive or whether they are differences that might have occurred to any one of the ordinary skills so in order to know the obviousness you will be understanding the obviousness that focuses on the difference between the claims and the prior art here non obviousness should not be confused with the complexities that arises while filing a drafting application and sometimes the simplest inventions are more innovative maybe your machine that is of higher values cannot be uh, cannot be an inventive step but your innovation can be so not must be the invention embrace a flash of genuineness and also the kind of sudden ins inspiration that leads to the archimedes principle or anything that relates to the day to day life also when you talk about inventions that is the product of the patient experimentations that is discovered entirely by the accident is just as patentable as one that arises from the pure mental efforts so just remember when you're talking about the invention when you're talking about the obviousness here you're talking about the mental efforts after that we can also say that patentability is not affected by the manner in which the invention is made it is no easy task to adopt the perspective of the different persons so a person of an ordinary skill in the art you have no right you have no skill to know what this actually mean at a different time so the time the invention was made so one can easily fall prey to the hindsight moving forward once you have seen the invention and how it is resolved the problem it may seems to be an obvious thing but it cannot be in the in the day to day life so the ingredients of the solutions were already available you cannot say that your invention is a valid invention so here in order to understand the basic idea that involves basic idea that actually talks about the inventive step you would be considering it by comparing the your claim your application your drafting file with the prior art in that particular field available here we are focusing on the prior art again and again because your invention will only be patentable when that particular thing is not available in the public domain and whenever i'm using the word public domain again and again here i'm talking about the prior art that is available in the entire world so here moving forward when you try to understand the invention you will be seen you will be simply be surprised to know because the component parts already exist in the future sorry in the past your invention will not be patented so if you talk about such things one cannot prove the obviousness of the combination of a or b or c by showing that a had already existed uh, so that b and so that c and you are combining each of them so in a similar thing federal circuit emphasizes a federal circuit court emphasizes that the standard of obviousness is not whether something would have been obvious to try so concerned that what the invention might be held obvious simply because their components already exist in the market or already exist in the public so one can not prove the obvious uh, rearrangement or the obviousness of the combination of a particular thing that we have already studied under the section 3 of the patent act like if there are two products uh, or if there are four products let's take an example of the products a b c d and you are merely making it a combination of that particular products that have already existed and so now the obviousness of such product cannot be proved so one has to show the person has to show the person who is filing the application the person who is filing the claim if i'm using the word claim again and again here i mean you are getting your products patented so you need to show that ordinary skilled person um, if that 
a person would combine the products a b c and d it will not become obvious in such cases there are various cases that has proved these points now instead one has to show that the invention was so obvious to do that a person of an ordinary scale would have proceeded with a reasonable ex expectations of this uh, success now uh, moving forward with one of the very important case that is ksr international corporation versus telefix in corporation in this case what happened was um, there was this bicycle paddles which gets adjusted through your height so height adjustable accelerator paddles equipped with the electronic sensors were asked for the patenting thing so there was the finding that these all things were already existing in the market but all these things when electronic sensor when then pedal when that height adjustable accelerator pedal was combined with together it's giving you the new thing it's giving you the new idea so basically to understand it this case here becomes important moving forward with this also an appeal in the supreme court moving forward with that case that we were discussing ksr international uh, the appeal was filed in the supreme court and then what happened in this case was the combination was considered to be the non obvious but because of the synergy that was very unexpected perhaps a perfume combined with a sunblock producing and uh, uh, creating an unexpected mosquito repellent in a same way perfume and the sunblock has been existing in the a world but when they combine it gives a new combination so the electronic sensors were becoming standard so eventually that person skill in that particular art would add them to the adjustable pedals just as a patent he had done so the court also observed that the combinations were more likely to be obvious if they consist of known components performing the unusual functions so in this particular case using the example of the perfume added with a known sunblock each behaving as one would expect so in ksr case the sensor and pedal in combination produced nothing more than the sum of the parts the synergy of the parts so the supreme court found that the teaching suggestions and motivation test that had been applied to woodenly in this case so any person with a common sense that the improvement did not arise to the level of the patentable invention so this is known as common sense the new test that was evolved with time so in this particular case that was merely considered to be the combination of the two products their components they consist of the two products that were already known performing the usual functions as on the other hand a combination might be not all of this if it creates some different type of synergy an unexpected synergy which was not done in this particular case moving forward although the obviousness that was involved in this particular case on the pedal pedal along with the electronic sensor cannot be patentable uh moving forward with the another case uh, that is known as in re government case again the us based case what happened in this case the government's claims were very detailed and none of the references included all those things that the government claimed the patent office found that the combination was still would have been obvious if any person with the ordinary scale would read that so they basically trying to claim an invention uh, on the lollipop in the shape of thumb so here the claimed invention that was in the shape of lollipop and the thumb the element of the claim of the invention was the thumb shaped candy the protective covering of the thumb shaped candy that is used as a toy and novelty for the replacement and there was a stick that is attached to the uh, lollipop the prior art located by the patent offices uh, was given the 13 types of references some type of references showed that such type of candy or ice cream is already available in the market along with the wrapper of all that product one ice cream product on the stick included a similar cardboard base 
Other references disclose that thumb-shaped candies and confections were not there in the market. So although all those references were not there, these points were discussed, these elements were discussed, were there in the patent application. So the various elements that were combined by the government all just combination used in the same way for the same purpose for the claimed invention. So here this was not considered to be the valid invention. Moving uh, forward with the another uh, case which is very important here. When you are talking about this case that means uh, the name of the case is Molecular Research Corporation versus CBS Incorporation. So in this particular case uh, the court upheld the determination that the claimed invention was not of this. So here I am giving you the example of this particular thing. Mm -hmm. So here they were basically trying to get a Rubik's Cube puzzle that was popularized as the Rubik Cube to be as patented. But that thing was the uh, infringement for the Rubik Cube. So their invention was the cube puzzle for the kind popularized as the Rubik Cube. So here they are trying to understand the puzzle in the shape of subdivided cube, the piece of which could be scrambled and stored by the rotating the facets of the cube. So here in this particular case, uh, in this particular application, the evidence showed by the person while considering those shapes has been dismissed as a cube was inadequate. Moreover, uh, the lower court properly concluded that they, that even someone who was aware of the sphere would not have found it to be obvious. So in this particular case, the invention was considered to be non-obvious and this can, could be patented. Moving forward, under subsequent federal precedents, secondary considerations have been mandatory aspect of such obviousness analysis. Secondary considerations include the following commercial success, failures of others, near simultaneous inventions. So the secondary considerations most frequently encountered is commercial success. Commercial success gives you various ideas that we have discussed in this, in this particular slide and an invention that has been successful in the marketplace could have been an obvious one. So these are the references from where I have collected the material. You can find the other material in the Spicy IP or the SEC online as well. These are the links. These are the textbooks. And thank you for today. Thank you for listening.